These are paintings by Carlos Vieira, made between 1912 and 1914, so they're coming up on their centenary. There were six paintings like this made for the uh, Pacific Exposition, the World's Fair of 1915. Um, there was some controversy. At the time, they wanted paintings of the Maya cities at their height, what they looked like when they were full of people. And as you see, there's no people in these paintings. There was a controversy. The first half of the 20th century, nobody knew for sure whether the cities were cities where people you know, bought and sold things and lived and spat and fought and you know, did things they do in cities, um, or if they were ceremonial centers that were only inhabited uh, during festivals and that they were empty the rest of the time kind of like a, an office building in New York City that uh, you know, empties out during the, during the night. Uh, in any case, the solution was to paint them after the fall, after the cities had been abandoned. This is supposedly uh, the city of Copan, about the year 900, maybe the year 1000, when the, uh, the people had long disappeared and the jungle was slowly taking over. Uh, the uh, place in the center, is the ball court. This was the, as you see, it's surrounded by a very large flat area, which must have been made to, uh, to hold lots of people. Um, the, uh, the building next to it, as you see, has got lots of steps, so people could actually sit up there like in bleachers and observe the ball game. Um, the temple on the left side of that is the, um, it's called Temple 26. It's got the hieroglyphic stairway, which is the most, uh, the longest and most complex inscription we have from the ancient Maya period. The uh, hieroglyphic stairway um, was unfortunately jumbled up. They, when they built the stairs, they built them on uh, soft earth and rubble so that um, over the centuries, the stairs slumped down, the stones got all mixed up, and only the bottom 14 steps are in order. Um, the rest of the, the other 20 steps or so are, are all messed up, and they are slowly putting them back in order like a jigsaw puzzle. They don't, uh, it's a lot harder than jigsaw puzzle because all the edges are straight. However, um, you can see that there are many tall stone monuments. These are called stelae, and uh, Copan has so many stelae, we found, um, the, we used to name them for letters of the alphabet, stella A, stella B. If you look to the left here, uh, the, far, the one on the far left in the square is stella D. The one in, next to it is stella, I think, C. B and A in the background are G, F, and E, and H, and so forth. Um, the ones over by the ball court are Stella M and N, and then they ran out of letters. They, they got to Stella Z, and um, they had to start numbering them, Stella 1, Stella 2, and they're now up to Stella 63. So there's 63 plus 26 uh, stone monuments worthy of being called a Stella found just at Copan, almost 100 in total. And, um, the, uh, the high buildings in the background are called the Acropolis of Copan. The Acropolis, of course, is a, is, literally means high city. It's, built, it's, buildings, it's buildings built very, very high to get close to God, or the gods. And um, the city itself, as you see, is very complex. Uh, structures, each built by different kings. The, the history of Copan covers 400 years, easily. Uh, from the first major kings to the fall around uh, 800 or 850. Um, this is the main plaza. There are, in fact, monuments way up in the hills in the background. There were outlying villages. There were um, suburbs. It was a huge city. It was a very, very important city. It's the southernmost city of the Maya Lowlands. It's, um, it's in what is now northern Honduras, uh, just over the border from Guatemala. And in fact, Copan, which probably had Oh, population between 20,000 and 50,000 people, maybe more, um, was the dominant city in that part of the, the world, and it dominated Quirigua, which is where the, the monuments that are uh, cast in this museum are from, and we have over here a painting of Quirigua.